Xin chào tất cả các bạn. Thứ năm lại đến rồi và chúng ta lại được gặp nhau trong uh, public talk của Education in Ireland Việt Nam. Tuần trước chúng ta đã cùng nhau nói chuyện về uh, Ireland là một đất nước đi từ potato chips lên microchips, uh, tức là từ uh, khoai tây chiên lên vi mạch như thế nào uh, bằng là việc là đầu tư vào uh, giáo dục và công nghệ cao. Uh, chắc hẳn là sau uh, thời gian uh, giãn cách xã hội thì uh, rất nhiều người trong số chúng ta đã uh, lên kế hoạch để đi uh, nghỉ, uh, đi du lịch. Uh, mặc dù là ở trong nước thôi nhưng mà chúng ta uh, có rất nhiều người chắc hẳn là đã đã hoặc là đang lên kế hoạch uh, đi nghỉ và có một cái điều thú vị ở đây là uh, khi uh, các bạn đi uh, du lịch bằng máy bay thì uh, điều thì nửa số máy bay ít nhất nửa số máy bay uh, hiện đang bay trên uh, bầu trời thế giới là được thuê và quản lý từ Ireland. Uhm, chị đã từng thấy uh, đã rất thấy rất là ngạc nhiên và uh, thú vị khi biết về thông tin này. Uh, đặc biệt là uh, ví dụ như uh, hãng uh, một trong các cái hãng hàng không uh, của chúng ta uh, đó là Bamboo Airways thì đang thuê cái đội bay và và quản lý cái đội bay của mình từ Dublin Island. Điều này đã được thực hiện như thế nào và điều đó thì có cái liên hệ gì đối với câu chuyện của chúng ta đang nói về giáo dục. Hôm nay thì chị mời các bạn cùng tham gia bài giảng của giáo sư Richard từ Dublin Business School là uh, một trường có một uh, rất là có nhiều các cái ngành giảng dạy đa dạng từ uh, quản trị kinh doanh đến uh, uh, các ngành xã hội như là tâm lý học hay là uh, media một trong những cái uh, cái cái ngành uh, là thế mạnh của Dublin Business School đó là Uh, business and Finance uh, Và trong cái ngành Finance đó thì có một cái lĩnh vực đó là uh, Aircraft Leasing uh, Chắc hẳn là các bạn đều đang rất là tò mò là uh, Aircraft Leasing uh, cho thuê máy bay uh, là gì uh, và nó, uh, nó có vai trò như thế nào trong cái uh, Finance Sector Uh, chúng ta chị xin mời tất cả cùng uh, theo dõi bài giảng uh, và với phần uh, giới thiệu của thầy uh, Prasad từ phòng quốc tế của Dublin Business School và uh, sau đó là bài giảng của giáo sư Richard cũng như mọi khi nếu uh, các bạn có bất kỳ câu hỏi gì thì hãy sử dụng phần bình luận uh, các câu hỏi của các bạn đều sẽ được uh, trả lời. Nào bây giờ chúng ta cùng bắt đầu. Well, thank you uh, Prasad and Professor Richard for uh, joining our virtual public lecture today. Uh, so how are you? Uh, we're doing good. How are you? Very good. Uh, I'm good, thank you. Uh, it Uh, now cooler in Hanoi, it's uh, 33 degrees, so it's not uh, as hot as last week uh, when we had 43 degrees, so, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's hot. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. yes. So, uh, is it warm uh, in Dublin right now? In no it's, warm, currently warm? 15. it's currently 15 degrees, which is actually quite cool for summer in Dublin it doesn't and it's been unusually cold we had a lovely May and June but July so far has been uh, not so good so yeah um, but uh, so, we're still first few days of July so hopefully it'll get better right absolutely. Uh, yeah so that's 
but uh, at, at least the, you have the reopening now so I guess you can you know go to restaurant and do yeah. go, do some holiday after this yeah 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 good yeah. yeah. so it seems like when i talk to uh, people in ireland and it seems that everyone is planning holiday so i think it's <laughs> the same here uh, after the lockdown we all you know uh rushed to uh, holidays and now all the uh, beaches and and, and vacation uh, location are fully fully booked <laughs> yeah Oh, yeah. okay. So, well, um, well, thank you again. And uh, I would like to uh, invite uh, Prasad to, to um, start the presentation uh, today uh, with uh, Dublin Business School. Yeah, um, thank you very much uh, for inviting us um, to this um, great um, um, place to reach um, um, the students and their parents and agents and everyone concerned with uh, study in Ireland. Um, they're happy, uh, Dublin Business School is happy to participate. Um, um, so um, I am Prasad Kohli, um, I'm head of student and agent recruitment at Dublin Business School. Um, I have been working with Dublin Business School for past 30, uh, 13 plus years at various roles. So um, I hope I'll be able to give you um, good information on uh, why you should be studying in Ireland uh, why particularly at DBS and why um, you should be studying at uh, Dublin, which is the capital city of Ireland, and um, what, uh, what difference can Dublin Business School make um, for your careers uh, in the future, et cetera. So um, let's start with a little bit uh, introduction about Dublin Business School. Um, Dublin Business School is, um, um, sorry, I'm just trying to make, uh, yeah, Dublin Business School is um, the largest autonomous college in Ireland. Um, uh, we have pro pathway programs in business English, um, in undergraduate, in postgraduate, in executive programs at various streams in business, IT, computer science, and psychology, social care, audio, music production, uh, we've, uh, we've, uh, even um, law, etc. Um, Dublin Business School in numbers, going further, Dublin Business School in numbers. Um, we have 9,500 plus students studying with us from um, uh, approximately uh, 120 plus countries um, from across the globe. We have 100 plus accredited, uh, globally accredited programs. Uh, this is our 45th year in operation and we have quite a um, varied international experience uh, with partnerships from uh, 100 plus universities across the globe. So, um, and one of the most important thing uh, for an institution would be the um, recognition and accreditation side of the um, degree for a student studying with us. Um, so uh, we are proudly associated with um, various professional bodies um, in Ireland, but the, um, but the most important one is the academic awarding body, QQI, Quality Qualifications Ireland. Um, all our programs that we offer to international students are accredited by QQI, so it means it's a global award. Wherever you go in the globe, your degree is recognized at the level that has been issued to you. Again, apart from the, um, the academic awarding uh, body, uh, we also have uh, professional bodies uh, such as ACCA, SEMA, the Law Society of Ireland and the Psychology Society of Ireland um, and giving you a recognition once you complete the course with us at certain courses. Uh, moving further, um, here is a um, um, picture of uh, some of the um, um, agent networks and uh, partner networks that we have across the globe. Um, moving a bit more further, um, coming to awards, um, uh, Dublin Business School has received over the years. Um, so in, there are two sides to Irish education. One, the public side, where you have public universities and institutes of technologies, and then you have private colleges. So on the private side, um, um, we are the largest autonomous college, uh, as we've seen in, number, uh, in numbers uh, just a little while ago. But when it comes to public universities and institutions, uh, we have to have had some awards to distinguish us or make us stand apart from the uh, institutions to show uh, the caliber of our infrastructure at DBS, uh, the lecturers acumen at DBS, uh, 
um, and the students' prosperity at GBS. So um, in the Education Awards 2018, uh, we won um, overall excellence in education. Um, again, in the same year, we won the best college of business. In the previous year, 2017, we won the best student experience award and best library team. And again, um, in terms of in business editor choice award, we had a hat trick of best business school uh, given to us in 2013, 14, and 15 in a, in a, in a straight row. Um, We've seen Dublin Business School in numbers um, just a little ago, a uh, little while ago. Let's see um, Dublin Business School. Why should uh, you be studying at Dublin Business School? Or if you're a parent, why should you be sending your student to study at Dublin Business School? In a bit more details here, um, an ability to get a government accredited and internationally recognized qualification from an English speaking country. So. Again, uh, with uh, Britain leaving out of Europe, Ireland becomes the only English-speaking country in European Union. So that's, that's uh, one of the best places to study in terms of an English-speaking country. Um, our programs are very much career-focused. So um, uh, they are, the, the career aspect is built into the uh, program. So again, quality of teaching, um, excellent um, facilities in terms of the infrastructure uh, accompanied by the, the, um, the professional or the lecturers of human and our lecturers are handpicked and Richard here himself is an um, example of that so they would have um, either um, a, a, a master's if not a PhD in the area at the same time would have minimum five to uh, six years of work experience uh, of the area where they are teaching so what it means is that the quality is generated both in terms of the academic ability um, to drive a class at the same time bring in the real-time life experiences from uh, corporate sectors across the economy and so that 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 is what we we pride on at DBS again uh, very much student uh, centered emphasis on learning um, wide range of undergraduate and postgraduate programs across business IT law and arts um, very much friendly, accessible staff, so both the international, the admission, even the lecturers themselves are available for one-on-one -on -one counseling, which doesn't happen um, in, 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 um, uh, in, in most of the uh, universities across the globe, but we realize that's, that's, the, uh, that's the important point in, in forming a relationship with a student. Uh, again, we're very much connected with industry, so all our programs are uh, designed for industry by industry. That's our slogan being for the years now. Um, again, value for the money with uh, uh, affordable fees um, that we offer the course to set. Um, one of the most important thing is the next one. We are right based in city center with five um, campus um, buildings right in the city center of Dublin, which is the capital city, which is, which is going to help you hugely in terms of moving yourself um, to and fro um, in Dublin. Again, plenty of accommodation uh, options because of this uh, place where we are based in Dublin um, and decades of uh, experience in assisting international students. So, um, and then you also, apart from the QQI award, award uh, we are talking about, you would also for some courses receive a professional accreditation, um, which, which makes a huge difference when you go on to um, a job interview. Again, um, having seen why Dublin Business School. Um, let's also quickly see. I'm, I'm sure you, ha you have heard a lot of this now. Why should you why should you be choosing Ireland and why should be why should you be choosing Dublin? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you have read um, a lot of a lot of articles about etc. But for me. Um, uh, I, I myself, coming from an international background, I went to study at DBS uh, 13 years back uh, to do my master's in business administration. So from my point of view, um, Ireland um, or Irish people are one of the most friendliest people I ever came across uh, in my um, in in my in my in my in my um, international travel experience, and it's one of the most uh, safest, peaceful, and green countries that I've seen. And I've travelled um, uh, approximately about 45 countries in my um, 13 uh, long 13 years career. So um, uh, I, I, I can vote for those two. Uh, they are the most friendliest people in in the globe, um, at least from my perspective. Very simple visa process. Uh, very simple visa process. Um, it's again one of the only English-speaking country, and a fantastic um, uh, tra 
traditional excellence. So uh, some poets that I read in my class 10th or high school, um, uh, I later came to know they're an Irish, uh, Irish poets, Irish literature um, uh, um, uh, um, guys um, uh, are uh, in the dramas, etc. So it's, it's a fantastic education tradition that they have. And, and um, also uh, Euro currency is used. So that's for Ireland and for Dublin. It's one of the most um, cosmopolitan uh, cities um, in, in, the, in, in Europe. Uh, again, friendly place to live um, and then um, uh, attracts a lot of youth uh, population and then um, is, um, is very close to um, many of the uh, European cities or in terms of um, uh, traveling facilities uh, and plenty of part-time jobs available because it's the, it's the capital of um, Ireland and always figures in the top 10 uh, study destinations uh, for a globe. Um, so that's a bit more information um, there about Ireland and uh, Dublin. Um, um, again, um, in the next slide, you will see some uh, famous places I put in there. You can see Hapney Bridge right across, uh, right over the leafy that runs through the Dublin. We're just about a minute away from here, not even a minute, but half a minute away from there. Um, uh, Eclipse of Moher from Galway, etc. Again, um, going into some serious, um, uh, um, uh, serious information about DBS. So the, um, the next one would be the, uh, intakes. So we have three intakes in an year. Um, so we've uh, January, April, and uh, September. So the next three intakes uh, from here on would be October 2020, January 2021, and April 2021. So we have three intakes in a year um, that would help you to fit in yourself, um, uh, depending on when you finish your course, etc. So going a bit more details onto the um, onto the undergraduate programs at DBS. So we've programs across streams. So for me to put all the programs here on the slide, um, uh, it, it is next to impossible. So I've, I've uh, put them into um, areas, uh, but within those areas, you would have five or six undergraduate programs. So to start with, uh, we have business and finance programs. So with financial services, uh, accounting and finance, um, under business, again, various streams such as project management, um, uh, uh, marketing, etc. Again, on the uh, marketing side, we have both the digital marketing Marketing, digital media as well as the uh, uh, traditional marketing and even within the marketing areas like even management again computing again under computing um, we have uh, areas such as data analytics software development and um, web and mobile technologies um, we have LLB law we've uh, be honors film uh, we've psychology both sides the general psychology as well as the business psychology we have social science social care human resource management sound engineering audio and music production and uh, to name a few uh, for more courses um, you could always visit uh, dbs.ie which would give you a bit more information um, than we um, discussed in here uh, going further into the postgraduate programs that we do um, all our program, all our postgraduate programs are one year in land and we have several programs across several streams. So to start with, we have seven MBAs that we do, Master of Business Administration. So we have MBA General and we have the traditional MBAs such as MBA HR, MBA Marketing, MBA Finance and the contemporary MBAs, MBA in Project Management, MBA Information Systems and MBA Cloud Computing. And coming to the finance area, we have the traditional finance, MSc accounting and finance. At the same time, um, the technology side of the finance, uh, FinTech, MSc FinTech. Um, again, um, coming into the marketing, again, uh, the traditional marketing with MSc marketing, as well as the online or digital marketing with, with to do with the uh, digital marketing, analytics, uh, social media, et cetera, uh, the MSc digital marketing. Uh, computer science, um, we have a general computer science program, uh, the MIS, um, MSc Information Systems with Computing. A um, bit more details into data analytics, MSc Data Analytics, MSc Business Analytics. Again, um, we have um, um, a program in MSc in Applied Psychology, MA in Addiction Studies. And then there's also General Management Program, MSc in Management Practice. And for those students that are not eligible directly uh, to progress on to Masters, we also have a pathway program in terms of postgraduate higher diplomas. So we've three or four postgraduate higher diplomas, postgraduate higher diploma in business, postgraduate higher diploma in data analytics, in FinTech, and postgraduate higher diploma in psychology. 
Um, um, so coming into some, um, so each year uh, we at DBS um, aim to uh, introduce new programs um, in discussions uh, with the current employment um, gaps or uh, um, in the skills are required in Ireland. So that's a huge investment what we make each year, introducing new programs. So for 2000, um, uh, uh, 21 uh, uh, Jan onwards, you could see on your screen there, we introduced uh, four new programs, um, a MSc Artificial Intelligence, AI, MSc Cyber Security, MSc in Financial Analytics, and MA in Creative Media. So each year, um, we have a, um, a talk with industry people and try to know about from their side of the um, opinion of what skills are required or what skills are in scarce in the job market um, uh, are going to be in the next five years or so. And uh, we, we take that into advice and discuss with our academics um, like uh, Richard um, and then uh, frame up the courses. So these are uh, the four new courses that's going to be available in Jan 2021. We are looking for more courses in September um, 2021. Again, going, um, um, so, uh, so the most important thing for you as a student, how much it's going to cost me um, to do all these wonderful programs that you've been talking about. Um, so again, so um, I disc I'll discuss the fees here uh, in three parts. Um, the pre-sessional programs, so, uh, um, so uh, pre-sessional programs are those programs where you, you might not have qualified in terms of your English language level uh, for a direct entry or a program. So you go the pre-sessional route. So say, for example, our courses require minimum 6.0 bands in IELTS say you only had 4.5 or 5 in IELTS, you go for a year of certificate in business language, or say you have only 5.5 um, and miss by 0.5 to meet our requirements, you can do a three months uh, pre-masters or pre-undergraduate program. Um, so the course fee for a uh, one year certificate in business language will be um, 6,200. And the course fee for uh, um, uh, three months pre-masters or pre-undergraduate program will be 1990. Again, all our bachelor programs are three years um, in length, uh, except the BSc computing because it has a placement year, it will be four years. Each year it costs 9,850 euro. And our master programs are priced at 12,500 euro or 13,500 euro, um, depending on uh, whether it's a new program or an uh, old program. We've, we've got some fantastic scholarships to offer. Uh, at the undergraduate program uh, for the computer science related programs, we, we, we offer a scholarship of 2,350 euro each year. Uh, and for other programs um, in undergraduate, we offer a scholarship of 500 in the year one, 500 in the year two, and about 1900 in the year three. And for our postgraduate programs, uh, we offer a scholarship of a thousand euro. Uh, again, going to, um, there a second. Um, um, coming to the accommodation facilities, um, um, uh, we have residences um, about uh, five to ten minutes away from DBS, state-of-the-art facilities uh, for students to stay and be comfortable. Um, it will cost a student around uh, 10,500 euros for an year uh, with state-of-the-art facilities building with their own room, study table, and a living space, and they might have to share a kitchen with one or two students. But if it's a too long-term investment, uh, long-term commitment to make for an year or too much of a money uh, to pay our friend. You could also use our host family facilities for the first four weeks to familiarize yourself with Irish culture uh, and, 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 and search your own way out. We offer uh, four weeks of homestay on your arrival at the cost of uh, 790 euro. Uh, for the four weeks, you get your food accommodation and you, your water bill, your uh, food bills, your laundry, your Wi-Fi bills are taken care of by the host um, themselves. Um, so again, um, going into further um, career services and student services. So this is one of the key area uh, that we pride and thrive at DBS. So what career opportunities are we going to give students once they finish course at DBS? Or while they study at DBS, what are the student services uh, that are 
are, are we going to provide to them? So let's talk first about the career service, uh, career service office. So we have three career coaches that work in our career service office. Um, they are very experienced HR professionals who, who have wide knowledge in terms of what is required in the job market. So to start with, um, on one side, um, um, they have plenty of sessions arranged to help you with your CV, with your interview techniques. Um, uh, we've, we've call, we, we call people from industry time to time. Um, for example, the other uh, time um, around Jan or February this year, we called um, head of um, cloud computing IBM to come and give a lecture on how uh, students can make themselves more employable. Um, so, uh, and on the practical side, we arrange two job fairs in, at GBS campus um, twice a year, every May and November. We invite companies to come into our campus to set up their platform so students could meet these companies. So we get about 50 odd companies um, for an year uh, where the student, where students could meet them um, face to face, find out the requirements, find out the job roles available and how to apply, where to go, what to do, uh, etc. So uh, we kind of provide a platform uh, where students can take a leap um, uh, and bound out of it. Um, so we with companies like IBM, Accenture, Amazon, uh, KPMG, Deloitte, Ernest & Young, PricewaterCooper, these sort of companies that visit um, our, com our college annually. Um, again, um, for students uh, to take advantage, if you have finished one year of master's at GBS, you get a two years of post-study work visa in Ireland. If you completed a three or four years of bachelor's, you get a one year of work visa, or you complete a um, you completed a one year of higher diploma, you get a one year of stay back option as well. So, um, so all in all, you can, you can be sure that um, uh, there will be a lot of uh, help and effort from our career team um, to help you um, get a job once you finish the course uh, at DBS. Again, looking into our graduate employability percentage, and 94% of our graduates uh, find employment or go for further study uh, within the first six months after their graduation. And I'm sure you are applaud me, RGBS, um, um, uh, to take pride in these statistics. So technically, you, you, technically, if you're a postgraduate student, if you're one among the 94, um, so 1.5 years, you should be able to uh, land a job, one year for study and six months of job search. Um, again, um, um, the next slide will show us um, um, places where our students work. So you can see yourself there, um, uh, students um, uh, everywhere in some of the most famous global companies there, LinkedIn, Dell, Apple, Google, Microsoft, PayPal, uh, Pfizer, Accenture, et cetera. Okay, so that's the career service part of the, um, um, uh, the uh, sci uh, uh, student experience. Then going into student services, uh, uh, we also learned that international students um, are to be taken care, uh, well, especially when they arrive new in at least in the first couple of months uh, before they familiarize themselves. Uh, it might be a new, different culture, uh, different food habits, different people that they meet, etc. So we look into the social awareness, the personal awareness, the social support, um, the uh, the academic support, the peer to peer support, the learning support, the belonging, the identity. So every every area has been touched, um, and it is headed by uh, Shane Mooney. Um, again, uh, if you have to call an Irish person, you, you can point out to Shane Mooney. Shane Mooney is, is an, a great example of how Irish can be um, very good to uh, uh, new cultures. Uh, again, um, we have plenty of clubs and societies at GBS, uh, about 60 plus of them. So we, we, we not only, uh, 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 we realize that it's not just the academic development of the student that we, uh, we aim at GBS. We also have to look into the overall, the holistic development of the student. So we invest uh, um, a lot into students experience, not just the academic side, but in terms of his uh, uh, social gatherings at GBS, uh, clubs and societies are formed in such a way. So you could um, enroll into any of these clubs and societies and they span across uh, sports, uh, literary events, uh, culture. So you have a Chinese society or a, uh, Indian society or a South Asian society, you have a soccer society, you have a basketball society, you have a drama society, music society. So wherever the student uh, fits in, um, you could uh, join, join it in the freshers week and um, from there on explore 
um, our societies. So again, um, um, we have a big tradition for sport. As you can see there in soccer, in the Bob um, Cup, uh, we are champions, uh, Hattrick champion of 2017, 2018 and 19. Um, we won the basketball um, uh, champions in 2018 and cricket intervarsity championship in 2019. Um, at least three of the uh, three of the international rugby players uh, from Ireland have studied at DBS at some stage. Um, 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 uh, Irish cricketer um, Kevin O'Brien has completed a diploma at DBS, so with long study, long um, uh, long um, tradition for sports personalities as well. Um, again, going further into uh what was um i um in, in this uncertain times of covid 19 what has been dbs response and how did dbs deal uh with the uncertain times so we've complied um with all the government advices uh, so starting 16th march uh, dbs is fully operational online and uh, not just the lectures and tutorials, um, but the student experience, which included the career service, the welfare of the students, um, the student support, et cetera, and summer exams are being conducted online. And there's a lot of communication and advice through the embassies. And we have been in contact, uh, uh, in daily contact with students uh, that have shown um, symptoms and uh, felt vulnerable or want to go back to their countries. We've always been helpful. Um, again, um, there's a, you know, so we've again invested uh, more money into uh, more efforts again into welfare services and resources for international students. We provided support for students returning home. Again, we realized that at this time um, the, the part-time um, job opportunities might be uh, one of the key focus. So our career sub has introduced part-time job uh, focus um, uh, drive wherein we help students with these, um, uh, uh, with these uh, jobs. Uh, in May 2020, um, our campus has seen the reopening for staff and uh, we're very much keen on looking forward for August 2020 when the campus is reopened uh, for students. So thank you very much for listening to me um, and, and I'm sure I helped you to know more about study in Ireland and particularly study at DBS. Um, so here are my contact details in case you want to get in touch with us. Um, and now, um, now, I take the privilege of introducing our professor, um, Richard. Um, um, Richard, um, he comes with uh, various experience. So first to start with his qualifications, um, he has plenty of qualifications. It, it takes me about a minute to read them now. Uh, so he has BBS in accounting, MA in public administration, um, uh, ACMA, uh, FCPFA, uh, FAIA, CFA, CISA. Am I correct, uh, Richard? Or are there more to add, I would say? <laughs> and he's, so far, so good. <laughs> he's currently acting course director at DBS and has a um, has his own consulting practice with uh, Bizwise Limited. Um, and he's formerly CEO of the Institute of uh, Incorporate Public Accounts. Uh, it's a recognized accountancy body. And he has worked at various key roles across uh, public and private sectors in Ireland. Um, and he is one of the most um, uh, applauded senior lecturer at DBS. Um, so Richard will, uh, Professor Richard will discuss um, um, the business and finance topic today. And there's no better person than him to uh, talk about business and finance, as he has huge ac um, academic knowledge, as you've seen in his uh, qualification. But at the same time, the speciality of our Professor Richard is that he brings um, classes to life uh, with his real-time experience, um, uh, examples from the various roles that he has worked in range of organizations um, across Irish and global economy. So I, um, I, 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 I invite uh, Professor Richard um, um, to do the topic business and finance for our um, audience. Okay, thank you Prasad, thank you uh, for having me. Uh, Education Ireland, thank you to everybody that's that's watching in and listening in to our program at the moment. It's uh, very nice to be here. As Prasad said, my name is Richard O'Callaghan and I am the course director for accounting and finance in Dublin Business School at the moment. And what I would like to do for uh, some period of time is talk to you about what we offer 
as a college, talk to you about the financial ecosystem in Dublin and in Ireland and the opportunities that you may find to learn and grow and indeed find employment in that area as well. And also to discuss uh, maybe future, not just current issues or current situations, but potential future issues and options that students will have in the accounting and finance area. And also maybe where your skills need to be developed and grown as we see what's sometimes referred to as automation, sometimes referred to as computerization of you know large swathes of the accounting and finance industry. We're finding that there's a whole new set of skills that finance people are developing to keep up with all of those particular areas. So let me start off by just talking about our programs first. So some of them have been mentioned already, but I will talk about them a little again. So as a, as a recognized college of the quality and qu qualifications framework in Ireland um, under QQI, we are recognized internationally as a provider of excellent education. And so what we provide is a whole range of both undergraduate and graduate programs in the financial services, finance, accounting and finance and business areas. And so to give you just some key highlights with respect to the overall structure of what we, what we offer, we have a couple of programs that are incredibly popular with students coming in from throughout the world. The first one I just want to mention is our BA Honours in Accounting and Finance, which we offer on both a full-time and part-time basis. And so we, have, we generally have hundreds, if not uh, sometimes up to six, seven, eight hundred students recruited onto this program uh, at any point in time. The structure of the course is such that uh, over a three year period, you qualify uh, fully to get a Bachelor of Arts and Honours qualification in accounting and finance. It covers a lot of different areas. So the qualification itself covers. Obviously, as the name would suggest, it covers accounting. It covers the different types of accounting. So it covers management accounting and financial accounting. And it also deals with corporate finance. So it, it covers the area of the management of finance in companies, the management of other types of important financial issues within companies, within the private sector, within the public sector, and elsewhere as well. But in addition, there are several other elements that give you a broader education. And so there is an introduction to IT on the course. Uh, there is ethics and governance, which if you go into many areas of finance or accounting, you will find is now a key focus in terms of the, the way that the sector operates. And so having a good understanding of ethics and of corporate governance is good educational and employment prospect building um, way, a, a good educational and employment prospect building way to go. In addition, we have taxation and audit, and it's all topped off by a capstone project, which allows you to shine. It allows you to show what you've learned over the three years and demonstrate your capability and competence in the area. One of the great advantages of this particular course is that it qualifies for the maximum available number of exemptions from ACCA. So it qualifies for up to nine exemptions, which means you would only have four subjects to do on the ACCA program. So we find that particularly attractive to our students. They're very much engaged when they look at, at their future. So there, many of the students that come onto the program are already thinking about uh, accounting or they're thinking about financial services. They're thinking about those types of opportunities for employment. In addition, we have other programs that focus on the same broad area, bringing you up to an even higher level. So we have a master's in uh, master of science in financial, uh, sorry, 
let me let me start that again uh, a master of science in international accounting and finance and that program really develops the student even further into a higher level understanding of accounting and finance not just local to ireland but around the world it provides you with a grounding for entering into a career in accounting and finance we also uh, have been at the forefront as, a, as an education institution of rolling out education in areas like fintech and in areas like reg tech or regulatory technology. And our most recent program, which will be launched uh, this, uh, this year and early next year, are, we have two programs, two new programs coming out. Those programs are in the area of aircraft leasing, and I'll talk a tiny bit about aircraft leasing in a couple of minutes uh, as well, and also in the area of fintech. So, uh, uh, sorry, not, and also in the area of financial analytics. So, you know, overall, the range of programs from straightforward accounting and finance through to the modern developments in areas such as fintech and financial analytics and business analytics and so on. Dublin Business School has you covered for all of those current and developing areas in the world of accounting and finance. With respect to the opportunities and the reasons why you might pick Ireland as a place to study above and beyond just the, the offerings of Dublin Business School, from the point of view of finance and financial services, Dublin is actually one of, the, one of the key hubs for certain types of finance worldwide. And for example, I just mentioned aviation leasing or aircraft leasing, and I said I'd come back to it. What's very interesting about aircraft leasing is that at the moment, through the systems that Ireland has put in place over a number of years to develop this industry, Ireland has about a 65% share of the entire aircraft leasing business worldwide and in excess of half of the leased aircrafts on the planet. So the chances are if you fly on an aircraft, if you've flown on an aircraft more than two or three times that you've actually flown on an aircraft that has technically been leased and owned out of Dublin. So uh, all of the major aircraft leasing firms worldwide have a presence here and that feeds into an ecosystem and a culture uh, within our financial services area. On the insurance side, we have similar types of arrangements uh, that are in place. So again, the, the building of the financial services hub in this country means that we have the top five global insurance companies. We have the top, or sorry, top 15 global insurers, top five reinsurers, and top three global insurance brokers. And um, an interesting statistic from Ireland is that Ireland has the highest concentration per capita of actuaries in the world. So I, I think that's a very interesting uh, figure. There are many billions of euro that are under management and there, there is also a lot of services that are offered worldwide from hubs in Ireland. Uh, funds industry is an extremely large industry in Ireland as well. Ireland as in terms of interconnectedness and in, in terms of location. As uh, Prasad mentioned already, we, our first language is English here. Uh, and so for many years, because of our relative closeness to the East Coast of the United States, you can fly from Dublin to New York in about five and a half, six hours. Uh, you find that a lot of companies over the years who are coming out of the US, particularly in the financial services and funds management industries that want to operate in the European Union, have established their bases in Dublin. And so Ireland, currently, there is three, over three trillion euro in, in management, under management in Ireland, that is domiciled here from investments worldwide. We actually have the third largest funds industry in the world, uh, and the second largest in Europe. So we are a key player in this market as well. So we have the aircraft leasing industry where we're a key player. We have the funds management industry where we are a key player. And in Dublin, when you come to Dublin to study, as I've said, not only are you coming to a city where you can learn a lot that's heavily steeped in education history and learning history, you are also coming to one of the thriving financial hubs in the world. And so 
it's really important when you're thinking about your future, not just to think about, you know, are you going to be in a particular scenario where you're going to learn, but also will you have the opportunity to potentially develop your career, to potentially go on and get the type of experience that will stand to you uh, in your future when you go forward into the world to become the next wave of financial experts and the next wave of accountants and the next wave of business uh, executives and entrepreneurs worldwide. It is hugely important that you can get some time uh, working in organizations that you can really show on your CV that you have developed your knowledge in areas. From the point of view of Dublin, that opportunity is very much open to you. Okay, uh, uh, thank you uh, very much, uh, Professor Richard, for your uh, introduction. It sounds very interesting, uh, really mm -hmm. interesting. Um, what uh, program uh, this, uh, related to business and finance that DBS is uh, providing? And um, in one of the areas that uh, struck me and uh, that interests me is the uh, aircraft leasing. Um, yeah. You know, uh, Vietnam, you know, that uh, uh, has a, a growing aviation sector uh, that, mm -hmm. that, that, that developed uh, rapidly. Um, uh, therefore, I think this information uh, uh, should be very uh, um, important and interesting for our students. Um, uh, as you may know, our um, one of our uh, airlines, Bamboo Airlines, uh, leads the aircraft from Dublin. So, yeah. uh, you know, if you can say uh, a, a little bit more about that area, I mean, it's very, uh, it's quite a new uh, topic and new uh, program for Vietnamese students. Uh, can you please uh, elaborate on, uh, you know, what students uh, would learn from this program? I will. I will indeed. So the aircraft leasing industry has actually grown very quickly in the last number of years. It's a relatively new industry um, that kind of came out of previous crises and previous difficulties in the airline sector where airlines decided they really didn't want to own their own aircrafts anymore. And so they're, they're a new type of if you like, almost, it's a, it's a hybrid of owning the aircraft and how it's financed, how it's actually structured as a financial product, what's referred to sometimes as securitization, where you've had the, the aircraft being owned by a, a particular companies and then leased out. And so Ireland got into that, got into that area quite early. Um, and actually some of the, the, aircraft leasing companies that are in place now actually started off at more as ownership and maintenance companies, but were involved in the industry for many years. So over time, what you've had in Ireland is you've the development of a, a system of a system of funding and financing whereby you can, you can structure particular types of financial arrangements so that it's attractive to the company that wants to lease the aircraft. It's also potentially attractive to investors to invest in the leasing of the aircraft. Now, what, what's happened is that the, Ireland ultimately has grown to be, you know, it, it varies depending on the number you look at, uh, but, you know, it's grown to be around somewhere between 40 and 50% of the entire aircraft leasing industry worldwide. Now, you mentioned Bamboo Air and, you know, Bamboo Air and other airlines uh, in Asia are... I mean, the, the view in the aircraft industry or in the aircraft leasing industry and also in, in airlines more generally is that the next wave of aircraft leasing is actually likely to come out of Asia. So you're likely to see that the new, the new airlines and the relatively recently formed airlines are all going to lease their aircrafts and they're going to, you know, and some of it will be still done out of Dublin. Some of it will still be done out of New York, but it's likely that one or more hubs will also grow up in Asia where aircraft leasing will be structured and then rolled out uh, of Asia as well. And so it's a, it's a, for students, what it means is that you could be getting right in 
in an industry that it will be a brand new part of the finance industry in Asia. Um, it'll probably be a homegrown industry and the potential exists there because um, the, the, some of the figures I've seen in more recent times with respect to the growth of just airline travel across Asia is absolutely considerable. You know, you have, as you mentioned, Bamboo Air, you have several other airlines that have grown up relatively new that are, you know, that are in some ways trying to be the things like the Ryanair of, um, of Asia. And in doing that, they are going to be following those models. And, you know, the Ryanair model and, and companies like that, part of it has been the leasing of aircraft. So you, you could, as a student, be getting right into what it has been a very lucrative industry for Ireland and for the people involved in it over the years. Sorry, Maya, you're, you're um, muted. Uh, uh, with the, yes, thank you, very interesting uh, information. Um, but with the current situation of uh, COVID, uh, yeah. what are your thoughts about, uh, you know, airline industry? Um, uh, how, how would that affect your training? How uh, would it, uh, yeah. Mm. The funny thing about aircraft leasing is that it actually grew out of a previous crisis in airlines and in, in, you know, in the whole aircraft area um, previously. And the reason it became popular is uh, during these types of problems, airlines decided they didn't want to own the aircraft anymore. So there is, a, there is an analysis that could say that it could even grow further. Uh, as airlines themselves become much more about, you know, providing the, if you like the, what, what some people might call the front of house services, if you were talking about a hotel. So they provide, you know, you're checking in with them, you're, they, they provide you with the links, but all of the, all of the work of actually providing the aircraft, of maintaining the aircraft and then financing the aircraft is done by others. And, and that's what is happening. And very directly, I mean, clearly in the short term, the demand for aircraft is likely to go down and that could have a knock-on impact. But, I mean, if, if we can get to a situation where, you know, COVID is controlled, then at this point, there, there's nothing underlying in the world economy that says that we have to go into a long period of economic recession. And so this could be what economists are, are going to call or are, are calling a, a V-shaped recovery. So we, call, we go down very quickly, but there's nothing fundamental that says that if, if particularly if we can get a, um, a vaccine for, um, for COVID-19 and we can get beyond those issues, that the aircraft industry can just continue to grow. And if the aircraft, if aircraft and airlines continue to grow, then aircraft leasing will grow as well. So in many ways, there's a two-pronged advantage. If things are not great, then airlines, more airlines will tend to lease their aircraft. And so that provides opportunities. And if the airline industry actually recovers quickly and grows as a whole, they will also be demanding aircraft. So um, the potential exists that in either scenario, people with those kinds of skills will be well set up for, for their future. Uh, good, brilliant. Um, and uh, another area that uh, I'm sure that would be of interest to most students of, the, uh, to, of today is fintech. Yes. Uh, can I ask uh, you to uh, give some more details about uh, how this uh, uh, is, uh, you know, the program is provided at DBS? And, yeah. you know, um, because uh, just forgive me, I'm a non-technical person and uh, I'm just curious whether in the fintech, you know, it would include uh, topics like a blockchain and so on and so forth. Absolutely. It includes all of those areas. So there is, uh, as the name would suggest, fintech is literally taking the word finance, taking the word technology and bashing them together. And you come out with this idea of uh, fintech. Uh, and the, the basic, I suppose, more, particularly more recently in the last maybe five to seven years, 
Um, we have seen a couple of things happen in finance and financial services, which has promoted the, what you know, this term is often thrown around a lot and sometimes it may not be, you know, maybe overused, but you are in the financial services industry. You are seeing significant disruption where new players are able to come into the market and they're able to leverage this technology. They're able to take the modern technology. Blockchain would be one, but even simple things like, you know, be able to access information using APIs, um, we're now seeing things like artificial intelligence coming down the, the, the line that is changing things like the accounting industry. Um, as um, Prasad mentioned, I, I also have done some work in the recent past, uh, including in accounting. And I mean, there are apps out there now that are broadly in the fintech space where you put a, you put a, a receipt or an invoice into the app. It reads it, takes the information out, enters it into the accounting package. You know, so it's, it's taking the whole process across the board and it's automating all of these, all of these things. What we've also seen in, particularly in Europe, but there's no reason to think it won't happen elsewhere, is we've actually seen the European Union compel the traditional banks and the traditional financial service providers to open up access to the, the information, to transfer information when requested to by the new, the new players. Uh, and, you know, all of these things has really facilitated the growth of fintech. Blockchain is one part. And in, in many ways, uh, it's, it's the part that has opened up the idea of a new reform. Um, whether it'll end up being blockchain, that is the big changer. Um, my view for what it's worth is actually it's more likely to be artificial intelligence at this stage. Um, as an awful lot of things get uh, automated uh, up to and including share trading and so on. Um, that's not to say there aren't opportunities. It's, it's the opposite. Um, the opportunities will continue in the finance and, and in, this, in this area across the board because people still have to know how all of this works. Uh, and I haven't mentioned it yet, uh, but there is also the regulation issue. You know, uh, in most countries, you don't just get to open a bank in the morning. There are government licenses. You have to comply with whole swathes of rules. That, as we get into an automated situation, the actual monitoring and compliance actually becomes a huge job in its own right. And the other area of development that we are starting to see now is what's called reg tech. And so it's technology to look at the fintech and make sure that everything that's being done is legal and is above board and is treating customers properly. And so our program, what it fundamentally does is it equips students to go into the financial services sector with an understanding of this technology, these technology changes. They will learn about the blockchain. They will learn about the, the, the data analytics side and so on. And, but it's really bringing both of them together. Um, I have an IT background uh, as well. And one of the biggest issues uh, with IT and the rest of the world um, is IT talks one language, everyone else talks another language. And so getting them to understand each other is very difficult. And so people who can do that uh, people like graduates from our program can actually bring the two together and provide a key linchpin. And we are seeing already, you know, we already have a fintech ecosystem growing up in Dublin. We are now seeing the traditional banks starting to recruit lots of fintech people in because um, the one thing banks don't like losing is money. So um, they, won't, they won't give up without a fight uh, either. So the opportunities that are there at the moment are quite considerable, you know? Yeah. Um, just brilliant, add, brilliant, just, brilliant. Just to yeah. add to that, Richard, um, yeah. I was speaking to a, a fintech graduate um, from DBS the other day. And out of curiosity, I asked him, what is, the, uh, what is one single liner that you would say um, about the FinTech program? He said when he, when he thought of starting the program, he, he, he said he thought it is only the technology side of the finance that he yeah. might cover and that you would not have uh, jobs elsewhere in terms of the FinTech services and markets, etc. But then he said, Within, uh, within, a, within a week into the program uh, that he, he, was, he was so happy that the fintech program that we have doesn't just talk about the 
technical aspects of the finance industry, but then it is an overall, he called it an all-rounder program. He called it an mm-hmm. all-rounder program. I was very happy to hear that because, you know, some, some things like distributed ledger technologies or blockchain technologies might work, might not work. And, and for students mm-hmm. to study that and at the end of the program in a year or two to find out that the uh, blockchain technology is no longer the one that we use so all um, his program comes to an end there but but with our program so uh, especially the machine learning module uh, mm-hmm. or the data analytics module that we have in the fintech that I don't see um, um, going uh, going down any soon yeah. it's going sure. to be there years I would say Exactly, Prasa. Those are massively transferable skills. Uh, and, you know, even if you, the, the advantage of them is even if you don't go into the financial services industry, an ability to undertake data analysis is a skill that you can bring to so many different places. The yeah. ability to understand finance is something you can bring to so many different roles and, you know, functions the ability to understand regulation. I mean, the, the, the funny thing, I didn't, I didn't say this. I wish I had said it, but I didn't. Um, I can't remember who the original quote is, but there is, there is a, a saying about uh, innovation in financial technology, which is all innovation should start with regulation. In other yeah. words, unless you understand the regulation side, um, the product that you will develop will, is very possibly going to get you into serious trouble because it's such an important area that governments worldwide regulate it heavily. If you break those regulations and you don't understand, you just think, well, I'll program it. Um, You know, you cannot Facebook financial services. You can't do that, you know, build it early, release, let it break, fix it. Um, If you break financial services, somebody loses money. And, um, you know, it's just not, the same and so it's it's really important people understand that and that's what we develop yeah uh, brilliant and uh, and uh, uh, related to uh, this topic and uh, you know related to regulation uh, in the fin- fintech area uh, I have another question out of curiosity that what are your views about Bitcoin uh, you know, as you may know, many uh, governments uh, in many countries, the bitcoins are not regulated. Uh, it's yes. the same case in my country, uh, in Vietnam. What are your views? What are my views? Firstly, you see that chart behind me? Yeah. <laughs> that's-, that, that's, a, that's a real-time bitcoin price chart. Um, I put that up when I'm, when, I, when I'm lecturing online so students realize there are real markets going the whole time. Now, this is, a, this is one of those areas that actually opens up great debate in classes um, and you could spend days arguing it because the first thing I would say is that cryptocurrencies are not currencies. Okay? Realistically, their value changes so quickly and goes up so high and so low, so rapidly, that actually as a means of exchange, it is incredibly difficult to use them, you know, just to store wealth and then to, you know, you know, to to use it as you would the money in your bank account or, you know, uh, even commodities and so on. You know, I mean, the, 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 obviously, at its height, it ran up to something in the region of $19,000. It's now, you know, it dropped back down to about $6,000 for Bitcoin. It's up around $9,500 now. Uh, you know, if you got in at, you know, if you got in at when you could manufacture them for almost mo- nothing, you'd be a multimillionaire. Um, if you were the person and somebody did, that's because there was a market for it, who paid $18,000 for a Bitcoin, um, you are not a happy person. And so what we have, what we potentially have here is we have a technology um, both the, the, the idea of the, the currency in electronic format and the, in particular the blockchain, which is behind it, um, which have absolutely massive potential um, because, you know, particularly if some of the promises do turn out to be true. Now, I'm, as I mentioned, I'm, I have an IT background as well. Anyone that tells you that uh, anything is 100% safe in IT I am that rings all kinds of alarm bells in my head. So when they say the blockchain is immutable, I'm I tend to go. Ugh. 
you know, so we'll see. Uh, there's, there hasn't been much that's been invented that hasn't been hackable over the years. But, um, on, I, I mean, you were starting to see a move into a, a couple of areas out of the cryptocurrency. So you've started to see what's called tokenization, where other assets, um, you basically be able to trade them with uh, some of the, the concept of the Bitcoin or of, of the cryptocurrency behind it, very much tied in with the blockchain or other distributed ledgers. So you're seeing that as something that would be very real. Uh, and so the ability to take what were in the past shares to break up a financial asset and actually do that electronically, uh, you know, from the start in a blockchain will be significant. A number of central banks are also looking at at getting in and so that you could have central bank backed um, currencies that are based on cryptocurrencies as well. So whether, and, and you know, there are lots of views out there, whether realistically Bitcoin is going to end up being something, it's, I, as it stands, it's not a currency. You just could not put it in your pocket and, and say, um, you know, I'm going to keep it for a week and then go off and buy something with it. You could find that it's moved by 20% in value in a week. You know, that's, so it's not a store of wealth um, in that sense. But the technology that's behind it is a game changer. And I think one of my backgrounds, so um, uh, Prasad mentioned I was CEO of an accounting body for some time. And one of the things we did was regulate auditors. And um, blockchain and other distributed ledgers have the potential to absolutely disrupt the entire auditing profession. So if this immutable idea is true in, in, in blockchain, then the audit changes completely because the, trend, the basic transactions, if they're on the blockchain, um, de facto, if, again, if it's true, are, you cannot go back and say they didn't happen. The, you know, the idea of the consensus in the blockchain is we are accepting that they happened. Does that make sense? And so the traditional auditor role is to test yeah. transactions and make sure they're true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. as you um, mentioned earlier that the innovation should start with regulation. Yeah. And yeah. It's very relevant, it, with, with, especially with, with this topic, with Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and so on. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant, very interesting. Um, and um, I, I'm sure that many students would uh, be interested uh, that uh, uh, we, when they are at DBS, uh, they would uh, have opportunities for internship at uh, at uh, businesses and enterprises in the in the sector in the fintech sector, and yeah. uh, you know. Uh, yeah. If you have any, you know, examples of, of yeah, your... oh, we've we've had we've had lots lots of examples um, in terms of of people actually going, you know, going off into all kinds of different sectors. And um, to give just one example, um, I can't name the company for for privacy reasons, but a um, a fintech company in Dublin. One of the things we do on our programs is. Uh, at the the level of actually doing your um, research project, we try to make them practical or we offer the option to make them practical. And three of our students just last year went out into a fintech company, an operating fintech company in Dublin, and actually did a piece of research that the company itself thought was one of the most valuable pieces of research they had ever received. And so, you know, uh, 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 that, from an opportunity standpoint, is huge for the student. It's huge for the company. Um, and so we, we make those contacts. We have a very active uh, fintech society and finance society as well, which, you know, which brings together industry and the student. So you know, we regularly invite in senior executives from those companies to come and actually talk to the students. Um, and that provides the, a direct link that's there as well. And Prasad mentioned the whole career uh, supports that we offer as well. Those career supports uh, include help with 
you know, connecting for the internships, connecting for your experience. But also, um, as Prasad mentioned, you will have the opportunity as a graduate to, to work at least a year, if not two years in Ireland. And, you know, some people end up working even longer. And, you know, if you're, if you're in an area where there's a demand for skills, who knows where, what your visa situation could be in the positive sense. Um, but that said, you know, it's also important to bring your skills back to where you come from. And, you know, uh, you know development worldwide is really important. So that, we don't want to steal all the clever people, um, but we'll take a few of them if that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting, but uh, I'm sure that the experience, uh, international experience, working in you know top uh, uh, companies in the sector, yeah. it, it would yeah. be uh, valuable, invaluable for, for, for students, yeah. uh, you know. And um, mentioned uh, talking about uh, on the related topic of, of uh, internship, uh, you mentioned that uh, some of your students are working on projects, uh, and. Um, do you have any examples that, that that your student projects have come into you know into real life or and commercialize? Uh, I mean, we would we would have I, there's a lot of it is commercially sensitive, so it's not it's not really open to talking about it. But you know, there have been a number of examples on our different programs. So you would have the one I mentioned previously, but you would also have people who you know when they get when they do get their work, they actually end up t using their research time to do research on behalf of their employer, which subsequently gets rolled out internally within their organization. Um, you know, so, so the development of, of, you know, and particularly to be able to sit back and analyze in business actually isn't as easy as people think it is. Quite often on a day-to-day -day basis, people running businesses have to think about what immediately is going to happen next, what's going to happen next, and they don't get to take a big picture. And so the advantage for our students uh, in going in and for the businesses as well is they get to take that strategic view. You know? but, but I mean, our students end up working um, in different ways for all of the big four accounting firms, for banks, for uh, fintech companies, for... Um, you know, a, a complete range across the, the board. Uh, all the companies that you can think of as, as worldwide brands in, you know, in both financial services and but just in technology as well, uh, have significant locations in Dublin. And our students regularly end up on internships and in employment in companies like LinkedIn and Facebook. And, you know, and so all of those kinds of companies, um, you know, there's a, for example, in Dublin, there is a huge Microsoft presence, massive. They have about five or 6,000 employees, I think. Don't, it's, it's in the thousands, the exact number, I may have to go and check. But, you know, Microsoft has a, a massive um, presence in Dublin. Facebook, huge presence in Dublin. Google. Amazon, yeah, and, huge yeah. presence in Dublin. All of those companies are here. All the banks, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, you know, they all have presences in Dublin. Fantastic. Fantastic. And, uh, okay, uh, let me, and let me check with you. I know you, uh, are giving class after this. Are we good in time? Are we, uh, we have about, we four minutes. <laughs> right. Um, because I was going to ask, uh, something a personal question uh yeah. this would be the last one uh, I yeah no go ahead a, a, a minute or two won't make uh, won't be the end of the world they're always uh, late and... you know it i uh it struck me that you came from business sector and uh and you know can you say more about that uh, because i know that uh Irish education system uh, is uh, very interesting in the way that it has very close connection with the business sector. And yeah. you are a lively example of uh, this connection between, um, um, you know, education, uh, uh, university colleges and the business uh, and how did that happen? And, and you know, I, uh, can you tell your story? I can tell my story. First and <laughs> foremost, I am the eldest of 12 children. <laughs> so, uh, and, and, you know, it is a big thing 
that the Irish government has invested in education for many years and careers focused because I'm the eldest of 12. If they hadn't invested in, in initially, my first qualification was electronics. I'm actually also technically a, a recognized qualified engineer um, for my sins. Uh, but, you know, from an early stage, there was a twin prong. There was education, get, get people in the country qualified. So we were coming from a base in where we had very high unemployment. We were a poor country. And the government took a, took a decision, two-pronged. We're going to educate as many people as we can to in third level. And the second thing that we're going to do is try to attract international companies to come and locate in Ireland to provide, uh, to provide services. And so I'm, I'm a product of both of those as such. Um, from, the, from the education side, I mean, you know, as I said, my first qualification was in electronics and that the government paid for that. I'm not sure I could have gone to college if uh, the government didn't pay for that. I was a cleaner. I cleaned trains for a living before I went uh, and qualified um, in college. Um, the second thing then is there's been, as I said, there's a concerted effort to get those companies in. Uh, and so Ireland has recognized that it's a small open economy and that we are going to be, you know, we're not going to be in a position where we can tell the US what to do or the UK what to do or anybody else. And so we structured our economy or we've attempted to structure our economy to learn from, you know, the, the world economy as opposed to try to fight against it. And that, that has been the, the second leg of it. Um, over time then, I mean, I have, and I think this is the way of the future, I have constantly studied, much to, um, occasionally much to my wife's unhappiness when I haven't been around sometimes. Um, but, you, you know, the modern student is going to, you may not like to hear this, but you are going to be studying for the rest of your life. There are always skills you will need to develop um, that you will need to, to know. And there's so many industries now that have, that have continuing professional development. So, you know, I started off then um, after qualifying, I then became a civil servant for a number of years um, and then moved into education and then also set up my own, my own business at around the same time. And so um, there's times when I've mostly been self-employed and, and run my own business. Uh, as I mentioned, I was a CEO for eight years I was a fraud investigator for a while as well. And <laughs> so, and, and that's the other thing. Don't be, I would say, don't be afraid to see where your career takes you. You know, um, I think it's, 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 it's unfulfilling. Some people will like it, I'm sure, but it's unfulfilling to just say, I'm going to be this for the rest of my life. You know, um, people change all the time. I said, I started off in engineering then civil service, then finance. Um, but I've kind of maintained all of those over the years. Now I'm kind of back around between finance and IT with the fintech and they're, you know. And so I would encourage any student to try to look to the future to say, you know, the one thing I can do for myself is keep myself educated. So in whatever form you do it, if you keep yourself educated, you're ahead of the game. Okay. And one other statistic that I like to, to, to tell people about, um, about my family is that 10 out of 12 of us have completed third level education. Wow. Great. Great. So, Brilliant. Um, Brilliant. you know, it's a, you know, education is, is, is the way to build yourself up. You know, it unquestionably is. Brilliant. Um, I uh, I hope my sons, uh, you know, uh, listening this, uh, I I, am, I have to make sure that they uh, they, they they watch uh, this video uh, again. Um, uh, it's very interesting. And uh, and and can I ask uh, one more? Uh, you know, and and what is what is the advantage and disadvantage of uh, you know? coming from, to uh, an education institution at, uh, after uh, the business sector? In terms of, of doing, studying business, is it, and studying yeah. finance? No, I mean, uh, because you used to work, uh, have your own business. 
and now oh, yeah. you are in a, in an education institution. <clears throat> yeah, well, this what are the me. advantages and disadvantages? Yeah. Uh, are you know like uh, uh, that 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 um, very much very much got you there. Um, the advantages um, are the the biggest downside to being self employed is you are always working. That's that's just the bottom. That's the bottom line. Um, you know, you, there's no, you, you work most weekends, you do, you know, you do lots of, not to say I don't work eight weekends in this job, we ab- absolutely do. So, um, you know, so advantages are around things like, uh, you know, like that in particular, having some time to yourself. Um, even things like holidays um, that, that can, can be actual holidays as opposed to going somewhere else and bringing your computer and working on that for two weeks. And so it's, uh, I've, uh, I've often said that, that the funny thing is that you could, um, and I, I really like the sun and I've often thought, could I emigrate somewhere where it's sunnier? Mm-hmm. And then the other side is that, that if you're working, you don't get to see the sun all day. Most of the time, if you're tuned, but I do, you're sitting inside. <laughs> and so it's an interesting one. So there was that end. I mean, being self-employed is is um, obviously there's a there's a strong element of being you know in control of your own destiny in that sense. Um, there is a strong there's a strong element of you know planning success and then executing that success and making things happen. Um, but uh, again, I, I think this feeds into my philosophy of you don't just have a single career in your lifetime. Um, I think anyone, I think if you want to be truly successful now, um, you have to go, you know, and you find strange things that happen over time. So one of the things I've carved out um, in my, on my self-employed stuff is that I teach finance to builders. Wow. You know, and because I have a bit of an engineering background, I'm not completely disconnected from them, uh, but I can talk to them about finance. Those, those connections are hugely important. That, you know, tying part, you know, your technological part into your finance part or your management part into your creativity part, that's what's hugely important from a success point of view. If you can bring those together, that's where success is. You know, there are a million people that can design things that are fabulous, but have no idea how to commercialize them. Uh, you know, and it's bringing the multiple areas together. That's really important uh, for success. And, and then really you're in, in the, yeah. Okay. So, well, thank you very much. Uh, it has been a very interesting uh, talk. Uh, and, uh, Thank you very much for your time. And we know you are having a class right now, so That's we're right. not uh, keeping uh, your students uh, waiting anymore. Uh, and uh, okay, but but after you go, I ha- would like to have a, a couple of more questions with the Prasad. Uh, yeah. But uh, thank you again and uh, see you uh, next time, Professor Richard. Thank you. Thank you, everybody uh, who's tuned in. Thank you, Education in Ireland. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you, Richard, um, for for both sharing your life experiences, as you always do in the class, and your knowledge, uh, enormous knowledge in areas covering business, finance, fintech, cryptocurrencies, blockchains, (laughs) what Thank you very much. Good stuff there. Good stuff. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye bye. Okay, Prasad. Um, so uh, now I would like to uh, ask uh, you some of the questions related to uh, DPS and uh, you know uh, your uh, support to international student. Uh, no, no uh, it's uh, it's interesting that you mentioned that you are among the few uh, higher education institutions in Ireland that have more than one intake a year. And uh, uh, you have even have three intake. That, 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 uh, I, I was not aware. I thought you, would, uh, you have uh, three, two intakes, uh, but now you, uh, you can have uh, up to three. It's very interesting. So uh, can you uh, elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah. Okay. How 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 would it work uh, for yeah, for especially yeah. for international students? 
Yeah, okay. So um, traditionally um, for Irish education, um, September has been the only start date, um, both including um, uh, universities, uh, public universities and institutes of technologies. And I think it's the private colleges um, um, that have explored uh, um, next um, um, alternative intakes to September, which has been January. Um, and um, um, April in the recent past as well. Okay, so the realization comes um, is that um, so when you're dealing with international students, you are dealing with not just one um, academic um, uh, program schedule in one particular country, in one particular institution. You are dealing with um, academic program curriculum uh, with almost 120 countries. And within those 120 countries, um, like like you know, large number of universities or you know, uh, awarding bodies, etc. So it is not mandatory that someone starts a study in June, June and finishes up in the next next June that year um, that he is ready for a September intake. Someone, some uh, some of the institutions across the globe have. Um, um, start dates from Jan to December. Some of them have got um, uh, from April to April. So we wanted to replicate the same system um, back in Ireland so that uh, an international student doesn't waste time waiting for the next September if he finishes a bachelor's in December or finishes a bachelor's in May. So each time we wanted to give them an option to start. And why not? Um, especially April intake, you are going into direct summer in Ireland. So why not? <laughs> um, it, good. I think that uh, that's very good. And I give the, you know, flexible uh, uh, yeah, the choice the uh, to the students. And um, uh, another uh, quick question. So what is, is the normal class size at uh, Dublin Business School? Yeah, so usually uh, it depends on the program, basically. Uh, but, um, you know, our MBAs are very popular, the seven MBAs. So across the seven streams, you would have close to 150 students. Uh, but then um, if, when they come to core classes, um, there will be around 60 students per uh, uh, section. And if, when it comes to the specialist classes like HR or marketing, you'll have about 30, 35 students. So, um, and especially courses like... Um, uh, uh, data analytics or computer science related programs. Um, as for the theoretical class, uh, you would have uh, 60 odd in the class. But when it comes to practicals, we take um, real care that there won't be more than 30 students in a class because we want to give that individual attention to the student. So popular programs like MBA um, uh, would have um, a, like bigger number and that is what needed in a business and finance or management class. You need to uh, study with a bigger group, but in, in, in we, we are conscious, self-conscious and that's one of the DBS advantage uh, that we always talk about, that it's always one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, it is never one to the group. So, and a and lot of students over the years have said that is what they experience at DBS. So um, you can be assured of really uh, small class sizes wherever possible. Yeah, and, and uh, can I, you uh, were mentioning about MBA. Uh, can you, uh, what are the requirements to, for, uh, for, for entry in MBA? Uh, it, does it yeah. require GMAT or? Yeah, yeah so our, our, MBA, yeah, our MBA is a real global MBA. Uh, I, I call it as an inclusive MBA. So you would see some MBAs where you would, uh, you would have requirements that the student has to have finished the business a uh, bachelor's or a student has to have a uh, four years or five years work experience. So our MBA is a, is a, is a inclusive MBA very, it, uh, so um, it is, a, it is, uh, it is targeted across market segments of, you could be of any bachelor's uh, with the outlook for business or at the moment or in the future. Um, so you could be a bachelor of English literature. You could be a bachelor of psychology. You could be a Bachelor of Technology, but still be able to qualify for our MBA because um, um, we accept for students from various aspects of the, uh, or various streams of the undergraduate. That's on one point. The second point is our MBA is a, a replication of the corporate sector, how a company in a corporate sector works. So uh, in our MBA, you would have students from, um, uh, from 0 0.6 months of work experience up to 15 years of work experience. So is that is in a company? So in a company, you have um, uh, 
start as an intern. You have uh, employees at a, a junior level, middle level, senior level. So, so we wanted to replicate a company structure in a corporate world into an academic world. So say, for example, there are group presentations or group cases. Um, what it happens is when it comes to the um, uh, uh, doing forming a group. So in the group of the five students doing an assignment, you would have one student with about 13 years of work experience, one student with five, one student with two, one student with three, one student with... So everyone takes their own role. So in every minute of what you do in the class, we want to show um, that this is what going to be there for you in the corporate world. So that's that, that, that's where. So um, basically, in saying that, we accept students from any bachelor's background. Uh, you just need to have minimum of second class honors um, with uh, um, 6 6.6 uh, months to uh, any number of work experience. And uh, uh, we require GMAP, uh, but for students that do not um, uh, have. Uh, minimum second class. So at times uh, students have third class um, or a minimum of pass, but sometimes students would have uh, enormous experience of 10 years or 15 years. They might not be good at academics, but they have been brilliant in business that they ran or in the business that they work for. For those students, um, we, we require a GMAT. But uh, for the rest, uh, who, who has a minimum of second class uh, in their bachelor's, we don't require a, a GMAT. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Prasad, uh, for uh, again for very interesting and informative talk. And um, uh, now I am going to uh, say a few words in Vietnamese to uh, our viewers, uh, if you don't mind. Uh, no problem, uh, not at all. Các bạn thân mến, uh, vừa rồi chúng ta đã cùng nhau lắng nghe một cuộc trò chuyện vô cùng thú vị và nhiều thông tin bổ ích. Uh, chị hy vọng rằng uh, các bạn đã um, có học hỏi được uh, rất nhiều từ uh, giáo sư Richard um, về uh, lĩnh những lĩnh vực như là fintech, uh, rồi bitcoin, uh, blockchain, uh, những uh, những cái chủ đề đang uh, vô cùng sống động và phát triển hàng ngày trong uh, xã hội hiện uh, ngày nay, uh, cũng như là những thông tin về uh, Dublin Business School Uh, một uh, trường uh, giảng dạy các cái ngành về uh, tài chính, uh, bị, uh, uh, kinh doanh cũng như là uh, các cái ngành xã hội khác ở Ireland. Um, cảm ơn các bạn một lần nữa và hãy tiếp tục theo dõi fanpage Education in Ireland Việt Nam thứ năm hàng tuần vào 19h30. Còn bây giờ, xin chào và hẹn gặp lại. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you again, Prasad. So, um, goodbye for the day and uh, see you next time. Next. Um, thank you very much, um, especially uh, Education in Ireland um, for arranging this uh, um, interesting session um, with the viewers. Um, thank you. A special thanks to my hero, um, Elizabeth uh, McHenry. Um, and Isabel Watson and all the other um, staff at EI who work for this. Um, thank you, a special thanks to our professor Richard O'Callaghan. Um, he's, he's an epitome of academic and uh, practical knowledge in the areas of business and finance. There's no better speaker I could find um, to speak about this. And it's a very interesting uh, topic from aircraft leasing to fintech to blockchain technologies to cryptocurrencies. I've learned myself a lot today um, um, uh, about these areas. Um, I wish you all the best uh, with your search for uh, study abroad options, um, but um, you should seriously sit back, think about Ireland, think about particularly about DBS. So we, we, uh, we promise you the best of the um, places, both in terms of the uh, comfortability of studying and the study uh, in itself. So uh, we wish you all the best. I hope to see you um, or at least a majority of you um, at, at, in Ireland, in DBS, um, at various um, courses. Thank you very much. Thank you, EI, for giving this opportunity. And, and lovely to um, uh, talk to you um, sometime again in the future. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Prasad. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye-bye.